Here we're going to solve a nice system of nonlinear equations. So let's see what we've got. Our goal is to find all real numbers x and y such that x times 1 plus 1 over x squared plus y squared equals 2 and y times 1 minus 1 over x squared plus y squared equals 3. Now how might we approach this? Well, in my mind, the fact that we see an x squared plus y squared inspires the following factorization. So x plus i, y, x minus i, y. So perhaps we should be thinking about complex numbers. And it turns out that that will provide a really nice solution. Okay, so let's jump into it. So let's set z equal to x plus i, y. And notice that that means that z bar is equal to x minus i, y. That's the complex conjugate. And then furthermore, the modulus of z squared, which is equal to z times z bar, is equal to x squared plus y squared. So now let's take this first equation and then just rewrite it with some of these parts up here. So we have x times 1 plus 1 over the modulus of z squared equals 2. And then we have y times 1 minus 1 over the modulus of z squared equals 3. That's rewriting the second equation using our notation up here. Next, let's multiply the x through onto these two terms and the y through onto these two terms. So that will give us x plus x over modulus z squared equals 2. And then we'll have y minus y over modulus z squared equals 3. But we don't really want this to depend on x and y at all. We really like it to only depend on a single complex variable z. So what can we do this so that we only see z's? Well, maybe we'll multiply this second equation by i. So I'll multiply by i, and then we can add the two equations. So let's see what that gives us. I'll bring that over here so we have a little bit more room. So that's going to leave us with x plus i y, which is z, and then x minus i y over modulus of z, but that's exactly z bar over the modulus of z squared, because x minus i y is the complex conjugate of z. But that's equal to 2 plus 3i. But now this term right here can be simplified, and it can be simplified using the fact that the modulus of z squared is z times z bar. So that'll cancel that z bar in the numerator, leaving us with z plus 1 over z equals 2 plus 3i. So let's multiply both sides of this by z and then move this over. So that'll leave us with z squared minus 2 plus 3i times z plus 1 equals 0. So we've built this nice quadratic equation in z that we can solve. Okay, well, we'll just use the quadratic formula in order to solve this, and let's see what that will leave us with. So we'll have z equals, so it's negative b, so that'll be negative negative 2 plus 3i, so that's just 2 plus 3i plus minus the square root of, well, we've got b squared minus 4 times a times c. So that'll be 2 plus 3i squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 or minus 4. And that's all over 2. So now just by standard arithmetic of complex numbers, the interior of this square root can be simplified. And it can be simplified to minus 9 plus 2i. So maybe I'll leave that as a little bit of a homework exercise for you guys to do that simplification. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have z is equal to 2 plus 3i plus minus the square root of minus 9 plus 2i all over 2. Now we'd like to simplify this term right here, which is the square root of this complex number. But we're running out of room, so maybe we'll do that on the next board. Okay, on the last board, we determined that our value of z was equal to 2 plus 3i plus minus the square root of minus 9 plus 12i all over 2. There was a bit of a typo on the last board. I think this had just 2i when it should have been 12i. 
And then our goal is to extract the real part and the imaginary part of this number. The real part will play the role of x in the solution to this system of equations, and the imaginary part will play the role of y in the solution to this system of equations. So the only thing that really stands in our way is simplification of this square root of our complex number minus 9 plus 12i. So let's see what we can do with that. So we've got square root of minus 9 plus 12i. We know that the complex numbers are closed under taking square roots, so this should be of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. Now we can square both sides. That'll leave us with minus 9 plus 12i equals a squared minus b squared plus 2a times b times i. So that's what we get from multiplying this out. Next, we can equate real and imaginary parts on both sides of this equation. That gives us a system of equations. a squared minus b squared equals negative 9. And then 2ab equals 12. But 2ab equals 12 is the same thing as a times b is equal to 6. OK, but if a times b is equal to 6, that tells us that b is equal to 6 over a. Okay, well we can push that back into this first equation and that leaves us with a squared minus 36 over a squared equals negative 9. So from here maybe we'll move this 9 over and multiply this entire equation by a squared to clear our denominator. So that's going to leave us with a to the fourth plus 9a squared minus 36 equals 0. Now maybe we have to use the quadratic formula for this, but maybe we could also just factor and solve. And it turns out we can just factor here. So this factors as a squared plus 12 times a squared minus 3 equals 0. Okay, so notice that a squared plus 12 doesn't have any real solution, and we want a and b here to be real numbers. So that means this is not really contributing to our solution. But this a squared minus 3 is, that tells us that a is equal to plus minus root 3. If a is plus minus root 3, that means b is equal to plus minus 6 over root 3 which can be simplified to plus minus 2 root 3 just by rationalizing the denominator. But now we can put these two values of a and b in for our square root of 9 plus 12i up here, and we will see that z is now 2 plus 3i plus minus the square root of 3 plus minus 2 times the square root of 3i all over 2. And now we can easily extract real and imaginary parts. The real part is x. And notice for x, we'll have 2 plus minus root 3 over 2. And then y will be the imaginary part. And for y, we will have 3 plus minus 2 root 3 over 2. And those represent our two solutions. And you might look at this and say, oh, well, that means you have four solutions because we have a choice of plus minus here and a choice of plus minus here. But in fact, in our setup, because of how A and B were constructed, if we have a positive sign here, we also must have a positive sign here. And if we have a negative sign here, we also must have a negative sign here. So that means we really only have two solutions. And that's a good place to stop.